today I've got the incredible Rebecca Briggs here. From Hi. Um, so <laughs> I love interviewing Rebecca um, because she really, really knows how to negotiate this virus really well and other things. And she's very clued up. And um, just to say very quickly, Rebecca, you actually, I think you actually woke me up in a big way. Remember when we used to meet um, at Norden Farm? And we would sit there and we're talking about a few years ago now. I think it was after I, after I came out of the wheelchair and you were filling me in particularly about the vaccinations. And what's really interesting now is you and uh, Kate Shimriani and all, and Philip, De all of the, the truthers that are going out against vaccinations are saying the same. How do you feel about all that? What's happening at the moment, anyway? I mean, it's 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 you know it's it's kind of a bittersweet thing because it's something that I've been talking about for years. Um, you know, this whole subject and you know what's happening globally and you know how you know how our freedoms are being taken away and you know things that are happening now. I've been talking about them for many years. Researched them, I'd say probably from about 1998. So. It's like, you know, justification of what, you know, I've been saying all along is, is truth, you know, because you get mm -hmm. conspiracy theories, um, you know, all types of names. And it's, it's, it's great to be, um, you know, justified in everything that I've been saying and doing for this time. So, yeah. Right, right. Okay. So, um, I like, as you know, I like to put a positive, this is the positive news, Rebecca. So yes. putting a positive spin on everything that's going out there. And I must admit that you give me so much hope because I know I don't have to worry about going to the doctor. I don't have to worry about taking care of my health because your research, everything that you've done, all your research is actually there to help a lot of people. And I feel very, very confident in the work that you do. It's kind of a progression of what I did, and um, funny enough, my, my biggest mentor passed away in June. Uh, he ended up in a care home, Keith Bascom, and he was amazing. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be walking around, as we all know. <laughs> my body wouldn't have been able to have coped. So it's interesting how people come into your life at the right time, and you came into my life after I came out of the wheelchair, but in particular now, when we're going through everything that we're going through, your message is so positive. Your message is going out loud and clear to people that there is a way to stay well. So would you like to maybe fill us in on, on how can we actually stay well uh, with everything that's going on around us? Well, the most important thing I think is, is you know, your immune system, keeping that, you know, working at, you know, as optimum capacity as, as it can. Um, not only immune system, but making sure that your blood is healthy as well. That's very important because um, as many will know, it's the blood issues that come with um, the current situation, uh, why a lot of people are suffering um, in terms of the oxygen levels within the blood. Um, and also, you know, the blood actually, actually coagulating and causing um, these issues so you know keeping your blood healthy um, keeping it alkaline and also keeping your immune system healthy is, is one of the main things um, that needs to be dealt with um, and then there's a couple of minerals that need to you need to make sure are in check too because um, that you know they, they are the things especially with um, the elderly and people over sort of menopausal age and men over 40, 50, they're the ones that are more at risk. And obviously we've seen as well that um, ethnic minorities can be more at risk due to the mm -hmm. deficiencies that they have as well. Okay. But, so staying on the positive vein and, and, you know, sending out a positive message, what's the easiest thing that people can do now to stay well so that they 
don't get the viruses, they don't get sick, you know, because there's so many different things that people can get. So, I mean, Kate Shimriani was talking about mus muscular dystrophy. She's yeah. proven that that's malnutrition. Yeah. How Can you explain to us, how can people be malnutritioned in this day and age when food is flowing everywhere? I mean, how does that make any sense, Rebecca? Well, this, this is it. Are, are we really eating real food? Are we eating real food? That's the thing. I mean, a lot of the, the what we're putting into our bodies, you know, can't be food. Food is meant to nourish. And, you know, many people are eating fast foods, eating foods full of chemicals, preservatives um, and additives. And not only that, the soil in which our foods are not only grown in, but if you eat meat, the animals that are also what they're eating is deficient. So, you know, if the soil is deficient and what the animals are eating are deficient, then what we're getting, you know, are deficient vegetables, fruits, meat. And, you know, it's inevitable that it will just slowly, slowly decline, especially when we're adding in, you know, all the other toxic fast foods and preservatives and chemicals. You know, there's, there's, we've got a bombardment of environmental toxins. Um, you know, things that disrupt our hormones, things that inhibit nutrient absorption. So it, it's all, it all accumulates together and that, you know, makes for, you know, not a very healthy human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that explains how, how we are ridiculously malnutritioned in this day and age when food is everywhere. People are basically, they're eating the wrong types of foods. And not, not only that, um, as, as you know, um, I do hair mineral analysis and, you know, I, I cover a big range of people, um, a big range of races and ages. And one thing I'm seeing is, is deficiency in children. I mean, I've, I've done hair tests for one year olds. That's probably the youngest that I've done. And, you know, they are deficient and this is probably passing over from the mother through the placenta into the baby so children now are having a bad start whereas you know if we were born maybe in the 70s 60s 50s 40s we had a better range of nutrition back then and there wasn't so many chemicals and things laced in our foods but now it's okay so you know deficiency is starting with, with babies and so we're actually as adults if you were breastfed you've probably stood a better chance at having those right minerals but people that aren't breastfed you know then have less minerals than somebody that is so you know it's, it's, it's all a matter of what you started off with in the first place really yes I totally agree with you there totally agree with you because I was breastfed full term and my sister wasn't and she was always getting infections like ear infections and and she you know a lot more problems than I had so I totally agree with that you know that breast is best, as they say yeah. I mean I've, I've had three three babies now and you know I I breast I'm, I'm still feeding the one that the, my baby at the moment but the other two you know I've breastfed one for one to for one and a half years and one to one and none of them had any colds flus mm -hmm. anything at all until i stopped breastfeeding so you know it just goes to show if a child isn't breastfed then obviously you know the nutritional levels have to be so much more in order to compensate for for the loss and you know mm -hmm. it's the immune system really you know with breastfeeding there's so much enzymes in that milk and that helps the gut bacteria to form and help it and help the immune system to be, you know, as strong as it can be. I mean, 80% of our immune system lies in our gut. So if a child doesn't get enzymes through the mother's milk, they're not there in formula milk. So a child just loses all that good, you know, doesn't have, isn't unable, isn't able to form that good gut bacteria. And so, it's, it can be a downward slope with allergies and then vaccines on top. And then by that time, there is no, there is no gut 
bacteria. Good duck bacteria. Okay. So. Well, that's really interesting. So, in a way, we're kind. Of, this is kind of maybe a program for new mums or mums that are pregnant, uh, mums to be. This is a really good way. So we're we're looking at the beginning of a life here. A tiny baby, if they're breastfed already, you're giving them a better chance. But what if the mother is actually malnutritioned and is not healthy herself? Can well, breast milk affect the child? Well, I mean, it will, it will only be positive for the child, but the child may not be getting what it needs. So, for example, if the mother, if the mother is deficient or the mother hasn't got great um, gut uh, microbiome going on, you know, with, within their digestive system, and she can't mm -hmm. pass that on to the child. So, in effect, she'll pass on her immune system onto her child, and the of child course. won't have as good as immune system as it should be. So, I mean, you know, I I, I test a lot of mothers that also um, have hair mineral tests, and one of the things I try to do while they're pregnant is just up their levels um, so that they are giving, you know. Their, their unborn child the best chance um, and and it make it definitely makes a big impact on on you know how how healthy the baby is I mean and lots of things have been noted for example um, many mothers take um, humic and fulvic acid while they're pregnant um, I took it through two of my pregnancies and it's funny because every when, whenever, well, I had a scan or the mothers that have been given the humic and fulvic have had a scan, they've, the, the, the radiographers, they've always mentioned that the babies have great bone density. And one of the things that humic and fulvic does is it strengthens your bones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there's definitely a lot of things that a mother can improve on and take to one cut down um, the chances of getting preeclampsia and the other to um, cut down the chances of getting um, gestational diabetes. There are, there are things that a mother can take to mm -hmm. stop those things from happening. So there's, you know, there's definitely things in the natural world that we can take mm -hmm. instead of pharmaceuticals to ensure that you have a great pregnancy and cut down the risk of miscarriage and things like that. So. Sure. Sure. So it's, it's really, really important. I mean, um, talking about the mineral tests that you're doing here, um, a lot of people don't know a lot about mineral tests. And most people go to the doctor and they have blood tests, um, allergy tests. Why do you feel that these mineral tests are so effective? And are they more effective than blood tests? Or do they need to work in conjunction with urine and blood tests, the conventional tests that doctors do, do you think it would be good if they also incorporated the mineral hair test? I mean, I, I, I would definitely advise the more um, diagnostic testing and things like that that you have is the more bigger portfolio you can have of your overall health. So, you know, you can do blood tests. I think blood tests are good to have with a hair mineral test, but uh, mineral tests, they actually show the the your tissue minerals so what's coming out through your hair so that would be what's in your tissues rather than what's in the blood but the doctors they will test what's in your blood so having both both comparisons are really good to get an overall picture of your health status mm. um, okay. but an, another, an, another thing I would say also is with a hair mineral test what doctors don't do is for example if you have um, if you feel that you may have some sort of heavy metal toxicity, um, a blood test will only show toxicity that's gone into your body within the first, say, 24 to 72 hours. After that, your body actually starts distributing the heavy metals into your tissues. So that's why when you would get a blood test to test for heavy metals, um, the doctor will, will normally say, you know, there's there's nothing there, and that will be because all the heavy metals have gone into your, you know, your fat, your fat, your um, and your your body. They've they've, you know, the way how the body helps um, 
to protect itself is by putting them into all the areas where they won't cause so much problems. So this, it comes out of the blood and into your tissues. So mm. that's why it's not picked up in, in doctors, uh, you know, conventional blood testing, which is a shame. It's, it's a great shame that they don't do that because if they did, then they may pick up a lot of underlying causes for issues, but then do they want to know the underlying causes? Mm. That, that's the thing. That, that's the big question. But it is really interesting because I remember discussing this with this uh, friend, this um, wonderful friend of mine, mentor, Keith Bascom. He used to do a lot of kinesiology testing, muscle testing and, yeah. and things like that, you know, to find out what was going on with me and other people. And he always used to say that blood tests are very inaccurate because the body changes so quickly, as you say. However, you, the minerals, when you, do, you, you get these from the actual tissues in the moment, that's why you take them as close as possible to the scalp. Yeah, so it would be like the first three. Yeah, it would give about a three months um, line of, of your, you know, your mineral status. So, um, yeah, it's a good, it's a very good indication to check your levels and, you know, not what only is in your body, but how quickly it's coming out of your body. So if, if the mineral level is very high, it can also indicate that your body is not able to absorb that mineral properly. And then we have to ask questions why. So this is the way how, it, you know, you're almost like a detective when you're, um, you know, doing these hair analyses, um, you know, like for you, for example, we did a hair analysis and, and also you had a gut test and those two together, it can just create a great picture of what's going on. And that way we can actually target, you know, what the issue is and deal with it rather than guesswork, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's basically putting everything together. Mm. In a way, complementary medicine was supposed to complement medicine but now it's gone way beyond in, in the understanding alternative medicine has become the main the main medicine and left uh, allopathic medicine behind that's what it feels like anyway yeah well, that's, that's what it feels like to be awakened but unfortunately mm. many people are just taking tablet after tablet after tablet um, and just hiding the symptoms what, of whatever issue they have and not actually addressing why they have that issue um, and, you know, and, and, and dealing with it. Okay, so it's fascinating and there's so much I could talk to you about. So again, you've got this, I love to, to ask the questions that people that are just walking around confused don't know what to do at all. They don't, they don't have a clue what's going on. They, some of them are trying to figure stuff out about what they need to eat or what they need to take. And there's so much, they're being bombarded all over the place. What is the main thing you would say that people now, you'd say the majority of the human race, what is the main thing you'd say that they have too little of and too much of? Mm. That's a good, good question. Too little of. This is something that's very, very simple, but you'd be surprised how much people don't have enough of. And that's simple, good, clean water. A lot of people are dehydrated and don't drink enough water. You know, it's fair enough having fizzy drinks and juices, and but you're yourself with too much sugar and not enough water um, you know with 70% water mm -hmm. at least yeah I remember sorry Rebecca I remember reading a book called the body's many cries for water by Batman Jali because yeah. um, the body basically recycles everything if it doesn't have the water it'll pull it out of your your organs and your cells your tissues and leaving you even more dehydrated. The body does its best, doesn't it? Not only that, dehydration is one of the main causes for the current issues that we have going on now. Um, you know, obviously, you know, one of the things that's been talked about is that babies and children are less susceptible to um, COVID. Um, and that one of the main reasons for that is that they, they're, 
plumper. They've got more, they've got more water in their tissues. And you look at the elderly. Okay. Look at the elderly. They are dehydrated. They have less water. They've naturally got wrinkles. They've got less water within their body, and and therefore, you know, this issue actually pulls the water out of the body, pulls oxygen out of the body, pulls water out of the body. So, you know, in effect, that's how the blood will end up coagulating, and then we'll have all these respiratory issues. So, water is a, is a big factor in keeping yourself healthy. Okay, that's really interesting what you just said. Um, the, that actually babies are less prone because they've got more fluids in them. That is something nobody knows. I didn't know that. With yeah. the research, I didn't know that. So one of the ways to actually stay well and to avoid getting this virus or this flu bug, hang on a second. Yeah, it's, I mean, as I say, I'm trying to give a positive spin here because there's too much depressing stuff. And of course, we're not the mainstream. We're not. <laughs> we're the mainstream of truth and love and compassion and hope. And there's too many people out there that absolutely terrify. And I want to give them messages of how to stay well. And as we said, you know, we know there is um, a virus or if, um, it's a flu bug. And it's not what the media are saying. But you're saying that your chances go down from actually getting it, which is a really positive message, if you drink a lot of water. So how much water should people be drinking, would you say? Well, an, an average adult should be drinking two litres of water a day. That should be, you know, you know, if you're not used to drinking water at all, I'd say, you know, 1.5 litres, which I guess that bottle is. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great start. One point. I mean, you know, if you're only drinking 500 mil, 250 mil a day, getting to 1.5 liters is great. So that's a good start. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, ultimately, two liters. You know, a, a male that's you know 20. The, the bigger you are, the more water you need. Put it that way. Um, mm -hmm. it's the more toxins mm -hmm. you'll have in your body, and therefore you need to use that water to help flush it out. So if you're overweight or, or obese, then you do need more water. Um, and, you know, you take it in gradual stages. I'm not telling anyone to, to you know, go and drink two litres of water straight away if, they, if they're not used to that. But try and make steps to, to have more, you know, yeah, bigger amounts every week, every month. The fact that you're making those steps and improving is what's important so you know that's that's the main thing but you know there's there's many positive things that you can do to to just enhance um you know your health as i said you've got yeah. more, um exercise exercise is so important um you oxygen, know oxygen of course yeah oxygen breathing breathing oxygen. in you know breathing in through your through your um mouth and out through your nose you know really deep breaths going to places where there's plenty of fresh air, oxygen. Um, Can I just yeah. ask you that? Let's stop there a second, because without uh, insulting the intelligence of people that are out there, why do they not understand that, how important oxygen is? Sorry. Um, so yeah, um, so basically, um, before that happened, <laughs> um, the question I had was, I'm not insult as I say, without insulting people's intelligence, um, why do people not understand how important oxygen is? And because they seem to be buying into the media's thing about wearing a mask, but they don't understand that if you wear a mask and you don't get the oxygen, why is oxygen so important? Can you explain that to people? Because, I mean, I learned it in school. A lot of us start, did, but maybe people have actually forgotten about it, Rebecca. What do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the main things why we need oxygen is, you know, we need oxygen in our cells to produce energy. Um, and that energy, obviously, is needed to breathe, um, to transport red blood cells around the body, uh, to help burn sugars and fatty acids. There's, there's a whole 
host of things that go on within our bodies and oxygen is, is almost like the basic molecule that's needed to create all those processes happening in your body. Without oxygen, we're kaput, we're dead. We drop down and our body starts to rot. So oxygen is, you know, like the number one thing our body needs in order mm -hmm. for all those processes to happen. So mm -hmm. you know, if we've got a lack of that or if, or if we're doing things that, that decrease our oxygen, within our life or our lifestyle, including our food, then, you know, it's, it's a quick way to a shorter life, really. Of course. And I mean, okay, so the human race is dealing with so many new conditions like dementia, cancer, muscular dystrophy, and now this virus. And, you know, they've been bombarded, diabetes, so many different conditions have started in the last 20 to 30 years, I think, particularly dementia. Why do you feel that so many people get dementia at such a young age? But how can we prevent this more than actually the looking at the problem? How can we prevent so many people from getting dementia at such a young age? Because it seems to be hitting like 40, 50, 60 year olds now when it used to be over, 90, over 80, 70, 80. What's yeah. happening? What's changed? And how can we stop it? Yeah, well, I mean, there's many things that have changed. I mean, you know, not to say that, you know, there's certain, you know, chemical, natural elements that have been around, for example, aluminium. Um, they've always been there. But the trouble is now we are so deficient. Our body isn't able to eliminate all those heavy metals that can that can help to cause these issues. So, you know, if, if, we're, if we're deficient, then our body is unable to eliminate all those toxins. So they accumulate in our bodies and they cause- Okay, so where, where are people getting all this aluminium from? Well, I mean, tin, tin foods is obviously one. Um, you know, many drinks are lined with aluminium. Um, it's in our tap water. Um, it's in vaccines. It's in it's in so many things. I mean, tin foil, um, pots. Um, what do you call it? The um, non-stick uh, pots that we cook with. There's so many different areas where um, you know there's there's aluminium. I mean, I'm not saying aluminium is the only cause, but it's definitely a factor to these um, you know neurodegenerative um, diseases and and things like that so one of one of one of the other things is again lack of oxygen um, of course it all connects back to the oxygen doesn't it you know, a lot of old body people, basically a lot of older people they they're not able to do the exercise that they maybe would have done if they for example you know people put them in old people's homes and they just sit there they, they don't have enough exercise and you know, it's just, it's just a catalyst and it, you know, it's, right. it's you know, we, we, so many more issues. More exercise, more moving around is very, very good for the right. brain. And, and eating more living foods, you know, all of us are obsessed almost with eating dead foods, foods that have no nutrition. You mean um, plants? Plants, we need, but when I say living foods, I mean not plants that have been cooked to, you know, to nothing. I'm talking living foods that aren't dead in the terms of once we cook once we cook a vegetable you kill all that enzyme activity and all of the the, new, the vitamins that are in that so eating more more foods that aren't cooked raw foods raw fruits and vegetables is, is okay it. sorry to stop you there because to me the british raw food the salad is is just ridiculous it's just a tiny bit of cucumber and tomato and lettuce. It's just dreadful. So when you say, so people in this country, they think if they're going to have a salad, a raw food salad, uh, the ordinary person that's trying to do this, they'll eat a bit of tomato, a bit of cucumber and a bit of lettuce. Yeah. What do you suggest they have that's actually life enhancing in a salad, for example, or yeah. as raw foods? I mean, you know, the thing is, it's very hard to get what would be the best from the supermarkets. Obviously, you know, the supermarkets, 
they they for example um uh what do you call them the the, the actual beetroot the the green leaf that comes out of the beetroot of the beetroot tops for example they are so nutritious but when we get the beetroot in the supermarkets they've chopped that off and thrown it away and they've just given us the you know the bulbs things like that you know i mean there's there's, there's foods all around us very nutritious foods you know hope you know making sure that they're clean and they're in a good spot where you know wildlife hasn't fouled on them but things like dandelion leaves they're so nutritious yeah um, can i ask you about dandelion leaves <laughs> because um I, I mean i'm kind of stuck in the old belief i suppose the way i was brought up that if it just grows in the garden you see these dandelion leaves you can you just cut them and cook them are they not poisonous and no, they're not poisonous make sure you wash them properly right not poisonous at all you can eat the dandelion in fact you can eat every single part of the dandelion um you know the root is, is very medicinal and has many many cleansing properties and so does the leaves um the leaves are also and the roots are also full of many vitamins um so yeah they they are, they are great to they're great to eat but you just have to make sure that they're clean because you see sure. you know, what about nettles because you know we we're doing an allotment at the moment there's nettles everywhere are yeah. also safe to eat i mean can you just literally cut them and cook them yeah you have to cook them first because obviously they they sting but once you cook them um you know you're able to get all the benefits without you know them affecting you in any way but not only are the, are the leaves uh, medicinal but also the, the root too mm -hmm. um, the root is very good for you know prostate um, men's prostate health and in fact very good for females with um, issues such as fibroids and and things like that so mother's yeah. nature mother nature's garden everything is out there for everyone nature's given us everything basically <coughs> um sorry sorry that's <laughs> I agree I agree um okay a big question before we finish because and um, as i say i always you're my go-to when it comes to healing and, and knowledge about how to be able to stay well within everything we're going through. Well, um, I mean, what would you recommend to people that may be going through a lot of stress at the moment? Again, oxygen is very, very important. Do not stay at home. If you're stressed, the worst thing is to stay between four walls and, you know, not get fresh air. You know, oxygen is so important to, you know, uh, to make you feel good you know i know there's many people out there that are in flats you know in blocks of flats and you know they, they just they haven't got the, the the option to go into their garden so i would say to get out get in the fresh air you know where you can if you you know if, if you do wear masks then you know find a place where you can take it off outside and you know do some breathing exercises mm -hmm. uh, that's because very that, have that oxygen i mean yeah i mean if you feel you need to wear a mask when you're around people make sure it's balanced so at least you know you still take it off when you're in nature and you can breathe in that good ass prana baby as ralph smart says um okay as i say i want to finish with um a very big question <laughs> um okay i don't want to go into the um fors and against um, vaccines. What I do want to ask is because there are so many, so much proof that uh, vaccines could cause autism. Without going into you know too much uh, about that, however, I do know a lot of parents need to know that it can actually be reversed. That it can actually be reversed. You can actually reverse the toxicity of vaccines is that true yeah i mean you know there's there's different there's obviously different degrees of how how um you know for the autism spectrum and you know how badly your child may may have um any of those conditions within that spectrum um but 
but one of the things that I would always do, for example, with someone that has come to me and has, um, you know, has been diagnosed with autism is, is again, have a look at their, their mineral levels. Um, one, of, one of the things that we do see is high, high levels of heavy metals within their bodies, be it mercury or aluminium. Um, also, another thing that is very apparent is parasites within children that have autism. Um, so there's there's a lot of things you know you have to take take a, that person through a level of uh, cleansing of the body first. That's the main thing um, that we have to do. And again, oxygen is very very important for that. And you know, uh, oxygen therapy is is a great thing to add to the protocol. Um, you know, to help with that. But I mean, when I when I treat people, we're seeing um, you know, effects take place within sort of like the first five days of a protocol. Um, you know, I've had non-verbal autistic children speaking within, you know, five days of, of a protocol being started. So, um, you know, and, and as, as we go on, you get more and more and more improvements. So it, it definitely um, can, you know, be greatly reduced the symptoms of autism and in some cases it can be reversed yeah okay can you hear me by the way can you hear me yeah i can hear you okay and then um the big question is um this is a big question again but i mean i could go on forever but i am trying to pass on positive news here i mean i believe everything is preventable and curable everything everything as long as you can get the body into a balanced homeostasis of the mind, the body, and the spirit. How right. people actually come to you, or if someone came to you with a terminal dis, dis ease, mm. have you had that happen, or how would you deal with that? Well, yeah, I, I have had that happen um, on several occasions. Um, it, it, it really all depends of stage that they're coming to me at I mean most of the time people unfortunately come to me once they've exhausted all their other options so for example you know often I get people that have gone through radio chemo you know several times and you know they're they're at the last stages I even get people that call me up you know while their mother is in the hospice and you know thinking I can all of a sudden you know work miracles but unfortunately yeah doesn't work like that and you know you cut your chances down greatly um you know with you know if if you're already at those you know high stages um when you've already had chemo and radiotherapy because of yeah. course they destroy your immune system and your body is you know your your liver and your kidneys can't cope with the level of toxicity um you know that that these things have created in your body so, you know, it right. depends, you know, on whether they are willing to work either alternative or, or integrated. So integrating both. Can you mix them both together? Have you had any success with that? Yes, you can. Um, yes, it's, it, that, it can work like that. Yes, mm -hmm. um, because there's many, there's many nutrients that will actually help target you know, for example, the chemo or the radiation in the right areas. So instead of the chemo or the, or the radio targeting all, all of the whole body, which, you know, creates toxicity, it can more target the tumour. But, you know, that's, that's quite complicated to go into. Um, but, yeah, you know, alternative and integrative, both can work um, together together. Um, but yeah, often, unfortunately, a lot of people do come to me when, when you know, they've, for example, I, I've had customers that have had ulcerated tumours literally coming out of their bodies and, and the doctors, the hospitals have, have turned them away and say, sorry, we can't help you. You know, it's gone too far, we can't help you. Um, and I've had cases where someone that was given two weeks to live ended up living six months through the nutrients that I was giving them but I mean this was a guy that had an ulcer he had lung cancer and the cancer had actually cut
come out of his skin due to the radiation that was given to him in hospitals. They literally burnt his skin and it came out through his skin. Mm. And he was in so much pain, um, but he lived six months longer than, you know, he, what yeah. he would have. I mean, between you and me, and I'm prepared to put myself on the line here, I believe that once, you know, as you say, if they went to see you or someone like yourself and learned what to do, they've got, before they have chemotherapy or radiation, they've got much better chance of survival, a huge chance of survival, not only because of the way it reduces their morale, and unfortunately on the NHS and places like that, you're not going to get the support you need when that happens. I mean, I, I watched my mother being given everything but not given nutrients at all. But as I say, the pro I want to end on a positive. So what we're saying is if, if you do, if someone does get a diagnosis, um, it may be you have got a huge um, um, expectancy of survival before they start to take out more nutrients out of you and destroy that beautiful immune system. I mean, that beautiful immune system that we were given, Rebecca, from the time of going full circle near, the baby is born with a beautiful immune system and we wanna keep it like that. And that way, you know, if we can keep that immune system working, because the minute you start giving that child serious vaccinations, they, they don't get colds and they don't get the normal things. They get things like leukemia and because they've got no immune system to work with. Isn't, isn't that true? And, you, and you've got to also think about, you know, a tumor or a cancer. It, it's, it's almost like it's a balloon that's, that's literally protecting your body from all those toxic cells which are in that balloon. So the instant you go to hospital and they do a biopsy and they pierce that balloon, all those cells spread in the body. And we're talking about billions of cancer cells. So that's why often... Once you get the diagnosis and you start going through all the testing at the hospital, um, yeah, downward slope. I mean, I know people that, you know, definitely had the cancer for a long time, but then as soon as they go to hospital, get the diagnosis, that negative, you know, the, the negative way how they, how they speak to you, that alone just brings down your whole frequency and is part of, of, of the progression, you know, towards, you know, a, yeah the mind yeah it's really interesting because i'm watching a very old program at the moment it's set in australia in the 1950s and in those days they weren't allowed to tell a patient that they were dying but you could see how the new culture was coming in with younger doctors mm. saying oh they've got a right to know exactly what's going on with them but i totally agree with you 100 percent. the mind is so creative. I mean, That's why when you do, like when you did the mineral test with me and you said, oh, you might have a condition. I said, I don't want to know about that. I'm not interested in the name of this condition because it's just a bunch of symptoms because I know that my mind is so creative. It's likely to make a meal of it. And I may get worse just from the panic and the fear. Well, not if, you at, if, you it, you know, if you look at it this way, almost every chronic illness and chronic condition, and you could even argue any disease or virus, is caused by deficiencies and toxicities of the body. So if you change that aspect and turn it around and improve those deficiencies, take out all those toxicities, then, you know, reversal of illness of any of those conditions is is more than possible um you know and, and any, you... any chronic illness that anyone's got is not you know it doesn't have to be a life sentence and it doesn't mean to say that you are on a lifetime of medication either you know there is always another alternative exactly exactly so um this is amazing as i said i'm trying to to spread some positive news here to everyone. There's other people like Rebecca, because I know you're, you're getting pretty busy, yeah. um, but there's lots of people that like Rebecca and uh, that can help you if you need it. 
Uh, Sorry, no ways to stay well, you know, so s turn off that media, you know, just watch the basics. And do you know what? The, please turn off that media because Lauren, sorry. spreading fear. I'm going to have to go now because I can hear my little okay. crying in the background. Okay, um, so hang on. So I'm just going to thank you so much, Rebecca. And um, hope, if you want to get in touch with Rebecca, please contact me through Moving On TV. Hopefully, she's going to come on and do her own show. And then we could do questions and answers from the public. It could be really exciting. So take care. Lots of love. And uh, welcome to Moving On TV. Contact us at movingontv1 at gmail.com. Lots of love. Bye. So there you go, guys. Some positive news of how to stay well. Uh, particularly for expectant moms and any of you who've just had a baby or you're just trying to figure out this big um, vortex that's going on outside. Rebecca gives us some very basic information of how to, of what to do to keep your child healthy, to keep yourself healthy. She talks about breastfeeding and the advantages. She talks about minerals and, and uh, how to do mineral tests. We talk about diseases of the body and of course how we're living in 2020 and how important water is. Take care, lots of love. I'll try and get this on as soon as possible.